Today's topic is wordiness. And if you have five minutes, I have five tips to help you avoid a few wordy expressions and tighten up your writing. Well, we're all writers, and so we love words, and we've spent a lot of time trying to find the very best word to make the very best sound that we wanted to make on the paper. And that's what our style is. That's how we create our style, is by selecting the words. But the truth is there are lots of times in our writing when we use wordy expressions that actually detract from the flow of the prose. And those are the kinds of things that editors particularly don't like. Now, wordiness, is what writing guru William Zinser calls clutter. In his book on writing well, which I've mentioned many times before, he says the following thing about clutter. Fighting clutter is like fighting weeds. The writer is always slightly behind. So getting out in front of clutter and cutting it off at the pass is our objective. I think one of the best ways to illustrate to you what clutter actually is, is to use a couple of Zinser's own examples. Now, how many times have you heard sentences like this one? At the present time, we are experiencing precipitation. Of course, all you really need to say is that it's raining. Simple, straightforward, no excessive wordiness. What Zinser calls clutter. One of the things that I've noticed that even in academic writing today is that there's a move toward having less cluttered writing. So it doesn't matter what you write, whether you write fiction or nonfiction, whether you write for a trade audience or an academic or professional audience, the notion of decreasing clutter in your writing is something that we all need to aspire toward. Here are my five tips for the five expressions that you might want to consider rewriting. Example number one is in close proximity to. Now, here are the examples. The house is in close proximity to the subway station. Don't write that. Just write, the house is near the subway station. The rewritten version is much tighter and much clearer. Here's number two. I'd appreciate it if you would do something. Here's some rewritten examples. I'd appreciate it if you would send me your receipt don't write that. Write this. Please send me your receipt. I have to ask the question is why in the world would any of us write the first one? Here's number three. It is often the case that. Well, here's some examples. It is often the case that writers use too many words. Don't write that. Instead, write writers often use too many words. It's so true, isn't it? Here's my next one. Make a contribution to. Here's the rewritten example. I hope that you will make a contribution to the anthology. Don't write that. Write this. I hope you will contribute to the anthology. And my final wordy expression is in the absence of. Here's the way to rewrite that. I didn't want to act in the absence of your opinion. Just write I didn't want to act without your opinion. Well, there's a few, and there are many, many more that we tend to use in our writing. They become habitual for us as individual writers. They become part of what we think is our style. But the fact is that if you tighten up some of these, your writing is going to be so much better. And I have a kind of bonus few ideas for you, how to tighten up your writing. William Zinser talks about the kinds of things that you put at the beginning of a sentence, which do nothing more than introduce what you're going to say in the sentence. And he suggests that you just delete all of those as you go through your writing and do your editing. Here are some examples of those. I might add, just add whatever it is you want to add. Don't say, I might add. How about, it should be pointed out. Just point it out, whatever it is. It is interesting to note that well, it may or may not be interesting to the reader, let the reader decide. And once you begin to think about these, you'll see even more kinds of things in your writing that add extra words that aren't actually necessary. Well, I'm gonna go back and start editing some of my work to see if I can't remove some of these expressions. Talk to you next time. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat.
and maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills. Five tips at a time.